So how often do you get out of your wardrobe? Not often, not that often. I won't be out today. I wasn't out yesterday. I might get out tomorrow. Yeah. So. Not even for a week. Yeah, because I do. Um, since you my wee in a bottle. What's that? You wee in a bottle. I just no, 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 no. Sorry, <laughs> no, no. There is a toilet not very far away. No, sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no, no. Because I, uh, since my radio job in London went south and COVID hit, I've been doing audio books. I've been narrating audio books, and I've done. 29 of them since May. So 29 audiobooks. Yeah, one of them was 15 hours long. Some of them are, are some of them are very long. Uh novels and, you know, wow. all, all sorts of stuff. So I spend a lot of time in the wardrobe. So it's nice to have you in here with me so I don't go completely crazy. Have you got any clothes in your wardrobe? No, not now. No, they're all on a rack out there now. I had to move them out when I turned this into a radio studio. <laughs> Oh, okay. Because I was like slightly concerned that you literally just had one white shirt and a, a, a wardrobe. <laughs> yeah. And no. you do your wheeze in there. <laughs> you did. You know, it's like when I said you do your wheeze in there. I missed it. Say, I missed. Yeah. I, I missed it when you said it. And uh, and I yeah. did. I say yes. Did I? Yeah. Right. So now I've confessed to. Yeah. Okay. Right. No. No. I don't do wheeze in here. No. That would. No. That would be too creepy. I mean. Yeah. Now, that would be weird. But you do have a door. I do have a door right here. This is the door here into the bedroom. Yeah. And then... Uh... So let me see you leave and come back in again. They're gone. Okay. Right. I have to Let's take my... I have to unplug my ear thing. Right, so I unplugged okay. you. So that, that's it. Okay. That's it right there. Oh, it right there. there. Oh, there you so are. Right. There you are. You're back. So that's it. Yeah. So this is this is my life now. The life in the, in the wardrobe. Uh, well, and I hope... But I, I go in here and I go on adventures. Like uh, this morning I was in India because it was an Indian story. And this afternoon I'll be in New York and it's a romance novel and I play the boss and also the boss's assistant that, uh, that gets it on with him. So yeah, it's an interesting life in the wardrobe. <laughs> Before we talk about that Gabby Roslin podcast, let's just get... A little bit about you, because everybody's seen you on the TV. Everybody loves Gabby. But we want to get a bit of background. You wanted to be a TV presenter from the age of three. How did you know? Um, uh, because my dad worked at the BBC. So I used to go to work with him, as you do as a little child. You go to work with your mum and your dad. And my mum was a doctor's receptionist. I didn't want to be a doctor. Um, and uh, my dad worked at the BBC as a continuity announcer and a newsreader. So uh, continuity announcer on telly, newsreader on the radio. And I used to go with him to television centre, BBC TV centre. And I just knew that that's what I wanted to do because I also loved watching television. I think I always joke that I came out of my mother and said, oh, turn the telly on. Um, <laughs> And it was an actual job. I never thought of it as um, showbiz or fame or glamour. I just thought, I love it. So I want to do something I love. And then I started watching Blue Peter from the age of Dot. And I knew that's what I wanted to do. And then more and more, the more of television I watched, I thought, no, that's really what I want to do. Saturday morning telly started when I was a teenager and I realized I'd moved on to wanting to do that. So when I did actually do Saturday morning TV, that was bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about the state of Saturday morning TV right now? Okay, so James Martin is a friend, so I have to be very careful. But I love James's show. I love Lisa uh, Faulkner. Um, but, but I just think I do get upset that there's no sort of anarchic television anymore. Motormouth was great fun. Um, there were we we did we did things that you don't see on telly anymore. We did crazy things. The Big Breakfast. We did crazy things. I think I think TV might be a bit safe. Not all the time, but I think Saturday morning telly might be a bit too safe. And I think there needs to be a place that that um, people can go to because I, I think Saturday morning television was a place for all ages. So kids could go and the the gags would go over their heads. Parents would lie there thinking, I can't believe they got away with that on telly. And and people, teenagers and university students, I think were probably our core audience. Um, and it was hangover TV. You didn't have to concentrate too hard. So I think that that sort of thing's missing with a bit of anarchic craziness. Now, you grew up, well, your family are from Zimbabwe. 
my father was born there yes so i went i'm very blessed to have been every year of my life and my uh grandmother was an mp the first female mp there and she fought to make it a multiracial society she loathed it as it was when ian smith got his hands on it and she hated it like that but you've not really been that political I work for the BBC for most of my life, okay. so I have to be very quiet. <laughs> okay. I believe in fairness throughout um, uh, very passionately, so I'm, I can say that, and I've always said that. I believe in, uh, I really truly believe, I think that how it was in Africa and how it is around the world, that the amount of hate towards somebody because of their color of their skin or their religion or their sexuality uh, or even their sex is uh, abhorrent, absolutely abhorrent. So yes, I stand stand by that no matter what. It's weird that you became a TV presenter because you described yourself as very shy, especially a very I, awkwardly I, I shy teenager. Am. No, I still am. And we talk about that a lot in the podcast because um, a lot of, actually, in fact, I think all of my guests so far bring it up. Um, and I think it needs to be talked about. It's very interesting. When I first started being sort of open about the fact that I was a very, very shy teenager and I still get moments of shyness, uh, people suddenly go, oh, I am too. And nobody talks about shyness. And um, so that's why we always talk about it. And, I, I, you know, Dame Judi Dench talks about it. And uh, Josh Groban, who's the one that we released, um, the latest one that we released, uh, he talks about it. Celia Imrie talks about it. Robbie Williams talks about it. We talk about our coping mechanisms. Was that your phone? No, no, it's just bits and pieces. Go. I've got a guy oh. here painting in the kitchen, and it's probably his phone. Because <laughs> <laughs> this is this is my wardrobe. So uh... yeah, well, I do my podcast in my husband's wardrobe, and I do all my videos in front of my wardrobe. Being shy, and being in at any level of show business. It doesn't help, does it? Because if you, you know, I used to be an air conditioning engineer and I think I'm quite shy and no one ever said to me when I was an air conditioning engineer, if I was awkward at some, you know, it was in Australia at a barbecue or something, no one ever said to me, oh, aren't you shy? But then when I did breakfast radio for a while, when you do breakfast radio, then, then it's like, you're not allowed to be shy. It's like, oh, you're very quiet. I was like, what do you want? Did, did Once you became well-known for live television, did it make it even worse, the shyness in social situations? Uh, no, I, it, it, no, not really. I just think, I think um, doing what you love helps. And I, I think in lockdown, um, instead of saying all the time, oh, I'm obsessed with telly or I'm addicted to telly, which a lot of the press have always said about me. And then I just go, yeah, you're right. I am. Um, I, I think I actually came to the conclusion that I, I, I love it. I properly love it. I'm very blessed to love my job. Um, uh, there, there are not many people that can say that. So I know how lucky I am. I really do. Uh, so I think because I love what I do, that helps. And so if I go to an event, I am there talking about what I love to do. Um, but if I go to a house party, I go to pieces. I can't go to a house party. I'm, not, I'm no good at them. We had to go uh, to, to people's parties. My husband, uh, who's out there, that's why I'm pointing over there. Uh, my husband always says, but how can you stand in front of millions of people or go to the Albert Hall and stand there and do an event? And yet you, you can't go to a party. It's different. I just, I'm just, the, you know, the, it's not all the time now. As 15-year-old it was, I couldn't. I went to a party and I literally couldn't speak. So at least I speak now. Because you did have a time, you, you mentioned the Albert Hall there. You went to the Albert Hall and suddenly had to host something. And like, I think it was a couple of nights before, you really couldn't go to a, a social event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's completely, and I will uh, probably still be like that. I remember there was another event we went to. And I had to hold my husband's hand and he said, oh, I'm just going to the loo. And I went, no, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. He said, well, I need to. I went, right. And I went with him. So I just, there are moments where that 15-year-old shyness goes, and and then I can't do it. But I, but because I love my job, it's never been a case of being too shy. I mean, there are certain things I wouldn't do on television. And that doesn't come down to shyness. That just comes down to, I won't do them. <laughs> 
So um, I wouldn't do I'm a Celebrity, but I watch it. Um, I wouldn't do Strictly Come Dancing, and I love it. Uh, and that Strictly actually does come down to shyness. I'm just too self-conscious and too shy to do that. But otherwise, uh, with the work that I do, when I'm hosting, when I'm presenting, when I'm broadcasting on the radio, when I'm doing the podcast, that's that's I'm I'm in my first love, my love zone. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. So how did you get into telly then? Uh, I trained at GSA, Guildford School of Acting, and um, there were no courses to be a presenter. And my father, who was a broadcaster, had gone to RADA, so I thought that might be the best way for me to get into the industry. So I did. I went to Guildford for three years, and I loved it, absolutely loved it. And then I left there in the June, and I started reading stage newspaper asking around and then I saw an advert and for the life of me I don't know where I saw it but I saw an advert no I saw an article about they were starting up a new uh, satellite and cable channel called super channel and um, it was the new way of television how television was going and in in between all of this in those that that summer I had written hundreds of letters to um, the head of BBC the head of um, BBC Children's because I wanted to do children's TV uh, in the beginning and then I wanted to move on um, uh, so I wrote to everybody and then I saw I read that they were starting up this new channel so I found out the name of the person and I rung up and I said hello I think I rung up because this is what I used to do I used to ring up with one voice and say oh hello can you please tell me the name of so and so so I put on a voice and then they tell me the name of the head of television head of programming and then I'd ring back and I'd say oh can I speak to in fact I really did do this with um uh Alan when he was um at the BBC I rung up his secretary and I said oh hello it was he was the controller of BBC one and so I got the name of his secretary I then rung up and said oh hello Jane um it's Gabby Roslin here can I speak to Alan and she said, what's it regarding? I said, oh, well, I've, I met him recently and he told me to call. And she said, can I ask what it's regarding? And I said, yes. He said about me coming in to talk to him for a meeting about um, hosting shows. And she said, are you sure? I said, of course I'm sure. <laughs> and I got that meeting and I did go in there. Brilliant. And I, I sat at the table and I just said, um, hello, I want to be a TV presenter. He said, when did we meet? I said, we haven't. But I want oh, to you came clean. You did come clean then. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. he knew he hadn't met me because I was facing him. Um, but then, but then I did actually just get, and then I got in touch with Super Channel through a letter. And uh, in the old days, there were letters. And then I got a phone call to say, would I make an audition tape of me interacting with kids because they were having a, they were doing a daily children's program. So I went back to my old school. I asked my old school if I could video me playing games with the kids. And I did. And then they called me in for a meeting and they gave me the job. Fantastic. And what was that show? It was called Hippo. And I did it for, gosh, quite a while on Super Channel. And then I started auditioning for Motormouth, which was a Saturday morning show. And I got that. And I was there for three years. And then I got The Big Breakfast. The Big Breakfast was the big break, wasn't it, really, with Chris Evans? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Well, all that Saturday morning to, to be doing... What I dreamt of since a teenager, to be literally doing a live Saturday morning show with phone-ins for pop stars and, and acting the fool and no auto cue and having fun and working with Neil Buchanan, who's a TV god. Heart um, attack, yeah. Yeah, so that was that really was extraordinary. Just before going live on air on the very first time. I'd never done live telly. I'd done pre-recorded links for two years introducing shows like the broom cover had been on the BBC it was similar to that yeah and I cut my teeth on that I was completely green I didn't I went in so they said you know about telly I said of course I do I knew nothing about it but I just knew I wanted to do it I'd practice with my dad I he used to pretend to be the cameraman and I'd have a box and I'd cut out and I was on the TV and my mum had um uh got a loo roll and wrote things so I could practice auto cue but that was when I was 12 13 so i when i started telly i i was completely green but then working with chris evans what was that like 
bless heaven. He's had you met him beforehand? No, but I used to watch him. So uh, when we were in the makeup chair from Motormouth, he was on television up there on the TV. Uh, I was having my makeup done. We we all used to watch Chris on. He was on very early morning Saturday telly, and we watched him. And we all thought he was mad and brilliant. And then the very first audition for the Big Breakfast, he was there. We auditioned together, and we I did five screen. He they, he'd been offered the job. I did five screen tests. And every single time I fell in love with the show more and, and just Chris and I just got on from day one. And then they, when they offered me the job, I screamed and screamed and screamed. What is it about him then having worked with him? What is, what is it that sets him apart? Because you know, his, his success Brilliant. has been phenomenal and he's reinvented himself a number of times and he's had failures oh, that- along the way, but he just bounces back. He hasn't, he hasn't reinvented himself. He's still the same person. Really? He's exactly person when we when i go and see him and i'm a uh, a guest on his virgin show we still breathe in each other we know in each other's breathing and thinking it's quite bizarre but but he hasn't changed he's exactly the same he's just probably a bit calmer but we both are still very hyper we both love what we do um he he looks at the whole he doesn't look at each thing and look at it individually he, he taught me a lot. He says I taught him a lot. I suppose I was the calm. He was the mad, although I'm pretty mad. So he was calm. We knew how to balance each other out. We were very blessed and very lucky. And we we know that. We absolutely know that. And it would have changed your life, Big Breakfast. You mentioned that you didn't get into TV presenting for the fame. But how did you deal with the fame that that brought you? I... I it has never been, but it's weird because I've been on to everybody's television and and now radio now for 12 years, but television for for 33 years. And thank goodness I'm still working that the people are used to me. So I don't people just say hello to me. Everyone knows I chat to everybody. I really do. So I'll be walking and I walk everywhere I go on about that. And I just go, hi, good morning. Good night. You know, people chat to me. Occasionally, it's a bit weird. But, that, you know, if somebody really wants to know your deep, dark secrets or because um, I, I don't have any, <laughs> uh, but also if they want to hug you or obviously you can't these days. But but so there are certain things. But but otherwise, everybody's been really nice to me. And, you know, the the press have their people that they want to have a go at and people they don't want to have a go at. But I think I've just lucky I've just carried on. The press being... did have a go at you at one stage. Was it ways to kill Gabby or something? It was terrible. What was that yeah. all about? Um, that was just their time to be like that about me. But it was at the same time that my parents both had cancer uh, in different hospitals. My mum was dying and my dad was just getting over cancer. So do you know what? It's you that it's a long time ago and um, I don't really live in the past. I don't. I'm very much. I live in the moment. I'm very grateful for all of those things. And when you hear people saying that, you always think, oh, not again. But I've always been like that. And I've always been um, somebody who uh, used to apologize for being happy all the time until mum died. And then I thought, I'm never apologizing again. I'm just going to, I am, I am, I am. My parents called me Pollyanna when I was a child, Mary Poppins. And I am a bit like that. I do like, I'm a bit sort of, let's make everything fun and happy. It's made you the perfect host for Children in Need many, many times. Do you have a, a favourite Children in Need moment? Because that's another crazy live show. It's not like that anymore. It's really sad, I suppose, that it's they don't have just two people doing the seven hours. They have different people. And I know it was very tough this year, and I think they did amazingly well. A huge amount of money raised. Uh, but working with Terry, you know, he's another TV god. Yeah, my word. Terry always used to say, "It's not brain surgery, um, it's just TV." And so, you know, if something went wrong, well, that's the joy about live. If something goes wrong, you just say, "Oops, it's gone wrong. Let's let's carry on." And I'm what, much prefer- what are the main differences between working with, say, Chris Evans and then working alongside Terry Wogan? They they seem like totally different personalities. They are. But the three of us worked together. So when we did the Terry and Gabby show, Chris produced it, yeah. and Terry. And- presented it um and yeah they're very they are they well they were because terry's no longer with us but very different terry was very laid back um just went with exactly whatever was coming he didn't like um rehearsing neither does chris neither did what do i so children in need we never 
never rehearsed it. We just knew sort of vaguely what we were going to do. Um, Big Breakfast was unscripted. I much prefer unscripted. And do you have a thing in your ear with somebody talking to you, though, when you're doing that? Yeah. yeah. So you've always and got I, a safety net. No, well, I like that open. And it means that I get to hear the director calling shots. So you'll hear the director saying, um, camera one, camera two. Oh, is somebody not in the building? Oh, can I have some sweets? You know, so I, I, I and it drives my husband mad because I'm able to listen to what's going on at every table if we ever go out to eat ever again um uh, but i'm always able to to hear what other people are saying and what about radio you've been doing a lot of that you did breakfast radio bbc radio london for a while you've got this great sunday show as well um, i've been doing that eight years now. yeah so which do you prefer out of them out of tv and radio That's not fair because if my radio boss sees this <laughs> okay <laughs> Uh, but, but no, I, there's no. Everyone knows I love television. Television okay. is my first love, and, yeah. and radio comes in at very. It's very very close. But it's live, and that's what's so wonderful. But I just like interviewing people. I love chatting to people. I never call it an interview. I just call it a chat. You've done a lot of stage work too. Not a lot, no. But I did. I think I needed to to do that because I I, I love singing. Um, I always wanted to be in a musical, so I did Chicago. Um, and that was great fun. That was really great fun. That was at the same time I was filming and doing the Terry and Gabby show in the day and then going on stage every night. So it, it was a crazy time, but I did that and I did um, When Harry Met Sally, which was great fun. I did that for six months uh, touring the country, but I was filming a TV show at the same time as that and we were filming that around the country. So, uh, but, so I like to do... do and you're a mum as well. So how you fit this all in, I have no idea. I, Came with me she was um i was a single mum then and my daughter who was three she came with me so it was great it was nice are you still off the booze yeah uh over two years now yeah why'd you knock it on the head because i didn't want to hang over anymore i was very lucky that i didn't have a problem with alcohol many of my friends have had and lots of people i know have had but i, I suddenly realized i didn't want i didn't want it anymore i didn't enjoy it and i didn't want a hangover I really hated having a hangover. And because I, I am, like I said, I love life so much, it just spoiled the next day. And I'm still the person who who doesn't sleep very well because I want to wake up the next day so the next day can happen. So, it, and then you have a hangover. And the older you get, the hangovers get worse. So I just thought, nah, I don't want to do it. So I did dry January, then February, then, and it just carried on. And I'd done dry January for so long. And I have to say, and it, it's not because I, I don't mean this in a smug way and everybody has their own choice, but I didn't realize how great I would feel with no alcohol in me. And if I'd known sooner, I would have stopped sooner. Yeah, I stopped drinking in 1998 and, and I, I, I don't think I had an issue with it, but I just don't know. But anyway, and I couldn't believe how much more I was getting done and uh, how great I was feeling. And I loved being able to drive somewhere and not have to yes. worry about the yeah. logistics of getting home. You just get yeah. in the car and drive. Cheap. Like, you don't have to get cabs everywhere. Yeah. And I first did it. I did it for a day. And then I thought, well, I'll do a week. And I felt great and did a month. And after a while, I thought, I think I've been conned all along because society has this whole thing about, you know, you know, oh, it's terrible. We'll drown our sorrows or... Uh, oh, it's great news. Let's celebrate. It's like any excuse, but it doesn't really help anything, I don't think. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There are a... Let's let's talk about uh, that Gabby Roslin podcast. There are a lot of celebrities interviewing celebrities podcasts. What makes yours different? Um, because this isn't a um, how do you... What's life changed for you and... Um, let's meditate together or uh, let's talk about your um, breakdown. If they want to talk about all of that, they can. But the premise of this is purely and simply about positivity and what makes you laugh. It's, it's, it's ended up being very much that every week so they, we laugh. I mean, we laugh uncontrollably. We've got so many in the bag. I mean, we've got enough until the middle of next year already. So, um, there are all sorts of incredible people coming up. Um, but what's so lovely is that people are contacting me, uh, me now and saying, can I come on it? I, I think that everybody wants to 
be, be a bit naughty. So it's it's naughty as in, I don't mean as in risque. It's just you know it's cheeking. We have a laugh. You find out you find out a side of um, the people that you might know, but you you hear a side of them that you've never heard before. And and what was so lovely about the Robbie Williams one and and Rob and I have known each other for such a long time, but you heard the the Robbie that I know away from the on screen. Um, Dame Judy was one of my people I'd always wanted to interview. And you you hear a side of her, because she's there with her daughter, Finty, that you've never heard in an interview before. And with Josh Groban, um, I'd never never met him. But, but we're messaging each other all the time. And how did your live stream go? And all sorts of things. So um, it's, it's very, um, you, you hear a real side of people, which is lovely. And it's not necessarily about their career. They talk about some of those things and and um they some of them talk very openly about some life changing moments but it always comes back to laughing it's very upbeat it's it's great fun and i'm so thrilled by the reaction i'm a bit shocked by the reaction it's sort of it, it's it's happened faster than than i imagined which is lovely was it, whose idea was it to have Dame Judy and her daughter? I say that because you also had David Tennant was on with, with his uh, wife, with his wife, with which, which you, I, I found that really refreshing. You know, I listen to a lot of interview podcasts and to go like, wow, oh yeah, this is a, why has no one thought of this before? That was your idea. You wanted to do it that way yeah. with those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I, I do all the own, my own asks and bookings. So that's all come just through me. But I, I wanted to have the two of them together because I love staged. Um, I'd interviewed Finty before and I adored her. Um, so I just thought, why not have the two together? We've got another very famous uh, parent and child as well, which I can't announce yet. Okay. Um, okay. And we've got another um, two people who are related. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we've got a few because they heard the Dame Judy one and uh, they contacted me and said, could we do it together? Do you have a favourite one so far? I wouldn't do that. Okay. <laughs> it's like, it's I, worth a try. I wouldn't do that. No, I, 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 I'm I, still blown away by, you know, Josh Groban just saying yes. And now, as I said, we're, we're messaging each other. Um, uh, Josh is just one of the nicest, funniest people. And with the, the same strange sense of humour that I have. And uh, so we had great fun. But all of them, I, I can't begin to tell you how much I've loved doing all of them. Lots of them I've, I, I know. I mean, there's, we're very, I'm very open about the fact that uh, Robbie and I have known each other since he was 16. And um, uh, Keith Lemon, I know him. And I know Shirley. And I, uh, I've interviewed David. And I've interviewed Finty. So, they're, you know, because I suppose I've been doing it such a long time, I've interviewed a lot of people. So, yeah, but my dream is Oprah. Winfrey so if you know Oprah could you just let her know I'm sorry I've no I've no contacts at all with Oprah but if if anything you know if anything ever comes up and Oprah is, is let my, me know is, I'll definitely let you know what's the most surprising thing a guest has told you I I wouldn't be able to answer that because because I've interviewed so many people that I I could, I can't. I actually couldn't even tell you. You know, it, over over the years, or do you just mean for that Gabby Roslin podcast? I mean for that Gabby Roslin podcast because that's um, that's, that's the current I, one. And no, no, that that n not that anyone surprised me. I think I've been surprised by every single one, if that makes sense. You know, that the fact that people are coming up to me in the street and singing that Gabby Roslin podcast. <laughs> I, who wrote that music I got in touch with her she's been on my radio show and I, I said to Beth do you know what is there any chance you could write me a jingle and she went yeah what do you want I said well can you just send something through that's upbeat that people will sing you want to dance to that's sort of I don't know you know and she sent that through and I was well and I played it to my kids and the production company Camia who make it with me who are fantastic the producers and we all just went, oh, my God, we're singing it around the house. So uh, Beth Macari, bless you for that. Um, but but I suppose I'm surprised each and every time that, that they are so open and they want to have a laugh. 
Do you think it's been easier because of lockdown? Um, I suppose, yes. I mean, there's the one that we're putting out next week. So when is this going out? This will go out today on YouTube and it'll go out in two weeks' time on podcast radio. Okay, so I won't say who it is next week, okay. but he's a very, very famous uh, actor. Extremely famous, movie famous, many movie famous, very, very famous. So um, uh, that it, it's, ju it's just lovely. <laughs> I'm thrilled by it. I get very excited. I really do. I still get, we, in fact, that actor and I, we talk about how excited. We, he's very famous um, and uh, Oscar famous. And, and we talk about how excited we both get about meeting people. So uh, it's lovely that he feels the same and I feel the same. And what podcasts do you listen to? Uh, I love Craig's um, Two Shot podcast. Well, I think it's great. Uh, Craig Parkinson, the Two Shot podcast. Um, he, he's a very old friend of mine. And uh, he's a great actor. Of course, everyone knows him as the caddy in um, Line of Duty. But that's a right. great podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was a guest on um, Josh Widdicombe and Rob Beckett's podcast, yeah. Lockdown Parallel. And I... We laughed so much that I thought I was going to be sick. I mean, we <laughs> laughed and laughed. And I've known Rob Beckett for years. I know his family. So it was a joy to be on that one. So, But I listened to it before. So when they asked me to come on it, I was really, really chuffed. Um, uh, I really enjoy um, uh, uh, Giles Brandreth's uh, something. Nothing, nothing rhymes with purple. No, That's my it. God. I, there is, there, I think it's called Something Rhymes with Purple, isn't nothing it? Something Rhymes yeah. with Purple. Yeah. Uh, uh, right. Uh, oh, I've just seen a news flash about another COVID vaccine. Excellent. See, it's all good news. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. So uh, look, I'm going to get my look. I'm going to get my podcast up on here, and there we go. I'm going to get it for you. Yeah, lockdown p parenting hell. Yeah. Uh, something rhymes with purple with that... Giles and Susie. I just, it's fascinating. Tom Reed Wilson, he is a delight, and I love. He has words with, and I really enjoy that one. Also. <laughs> I, I love the Showstoppers, the improvised musical, because they're brilliant. They're, they are fantastic. I've seen them live and they've been on my radio show. I'm just going through the ones that I've got here that I've uh, subscribed to. Bryony Gordon's Mad World, which is superb. And Is It Just Me with Joe Elvin. So you've, been on the, you've been on Is It Just Me as well, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did quite an extensive talk about not matching underwear, I remember. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I don't think it's silly. That's <laughs> silly. A waste of time. The one to listen to, get it from your favourite podcast provider, is That Gabby Roslin Podcast. It's the Thank party you. everyone's invited to. Thank you very, very much. How lovely. You're very kind, Graham. Thank you, Gabby. Thanks for for being on the show. It's a real pleasure. It's a real thrill, oh, actually. Thanks, thanks for very, very much. It's been great. Thank you. Love to talk to you. Have a lovely day. How often do you get out of your wardrobe? Not often, not that often. I won't be out today. I wasn't out yesterday. I might get out tomorrow. Yeah. So. Not even for a week. Yeah, because I do. Um, since you my wee in a bottle. What's that? You wee in a bottle. I just no, 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 no. Sorry, <laughs> no, no. There is a toilet not very far away. No, sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no, no. Because I, uh, since my radio job in London went south and COVID hit, I've been doing audio books. I've been nar narrating audio books, and I've done. 29 of them since May. So 29 audiobooks. Yeah, one of them was 15 hours long. Some of them are, are, are some of them are very long. Uh novels and, you know, wow. all, all sorts of stuff. So I spend a lot of time in the wardrobe. So it's nice to have you in here with me so I don't go completely crazy. Have you got any clothes in your wardrobe? No, not now. No, they're all on a rack out there now. I had to move them out when I turned this into a radio studio. <laughs> Oh, OK, because I was like slightly concerned that you literally just had one white shirt and a, a, a wardrobe. <laughs> yeah. And no. you did your wheeze in there. <laughs> you did see the mouth, like when I said, you do your wheeze in there. I missed it. Say, I missed yeah. it. I, I missed it when you said it. And uh, and I yeah. did I say yes, did I? Yeah. Right. So now I've confessed. to. Yeah. OK, right. No, no, I don't do wheeze in here. No, that would no, that would be too creepy. I mean, yeah. Now, that would be weird. But you do have a door. I do have a door right here. This is the door here into the bedroom. Yeah. And then... Uh... So let me see.
see you leave and come back in again. They're gone. Okay. Right. I have to Let's take my. I have to unplug my ear thing. All right. So I unplugged okay. you. So that, that's it. Okay. That's it right there. Oh, it right there. Oh, there you yeah, are. Right. There you are. You're back. So that's it. Yeah. So this is this is my life now. The life in the in the wardrobe. Uh, well, and I hope... but I I go in here and I go on adventures. Like uh, this morning, I was in India because it was an Indian story. And this afternoon, I'll be in New York, and it's a romance novel. And I play the boss and also the boss's assistant that uh, that gets it on with him. So yeah, it's an interesting life in the wardrobe. <laughs> Oh, well, enjoy, enjoy getting off of yourself. Stop. Thank you very much. Yes, it's been, <laughs> been great. Gabby Rosin, thank you very much. Thank you. Bye, Graham. Bye. Bye.